that leaves no listener behind. The following program on KCAA is pre-recorded. Welcome to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for The Mortgage Voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show each and every week. We come to you and we bring to you some great information about mortgages, about real estate, about what's happening in the overall economy, and all that is really important to you if you're out there trying to make decisions based on any of that information. As you know, and everybody knows, I mean, the world knows, uh, it's been difficult, more difficult, uh, as the months proceed in 2022 to get a mortgage, to be able to afford a home either by the amount of down payment you have to pay or the difficulty you have in coming up with the documentation to prove you can pay when you know you start out your mortgage one month and it's a, a percentage point in the rate and it, by the end of the time that you want to be able to lock it usually takes 10 15 days before you get it through underwriting approved and then you lock the loan that's normally how it goes the rate has already gone up by half a point and i'm not kidding half a point is probably accurate over the last six weeks if you're out there and you're listening to me welcome to the show i am jeff barton this is the mortgage voice and we can be heard and seen on youtube if you go to youtube jeff barton the mortgage voice you can see this show as well as many many other show hundreds of other shows that we have daryl hump what's our count up to do you know yeah we were 323 plus 100 Oh, well, that's 423. 423. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm so, counting the, the audio only as well. So. Well, it, it's whatever it is. The information is there. The archival information. It is interesting to go back and listen to what we were talking about six months ago, a year ago, a year and a half, two months ago, uh, and before COVID. Uh, a lot of things that drive rates, that drive the desire of people to get out there and get a mortgage, buy a home, all these things. Yeah, that's what we talk about in the moment. Now, at, at up front during what we do in the introduction part of the show uh, is talk about exactly the larger, you know, whether it's in the world or in the uh, state or in the nation about what is happening. And then we get to our guests who talk about the specific programs, the banks, uh, the different things that they can offer in terms of trying to help you get into that house that you want or refinance to take money out. Or we talk about other issues within the loan itself. Uh, let's get right to some per pertinent facts here. The 30-year fixed rate loan is at 7.14. That's right. We are above 7% once again. Anybody out there who has not uh, been around the mortgage business for or the mortgage trying to get a mortgage for the past you know, 10 or 15 years has no idea what 7% is like. But everybody knows that 7% is actually still below what the normal is. Uh, I know that doesn't, that's no solace to anybody. I mean, if you're getting a, a mortgage at 7.14% and you're trying to figure out, you know, historically where that is, it really depends on two things, right? The rate is one thing, but the price of the house is something else. So in order to get a mortgage, that's like getting a 5% mortgage, meaning it's 7% today, but you want to pay like it's 5%, the price of the house has to be a lot less than it is today too. So you're getting double whammied. Right, you're getting the price of the house, which in most of the markets that we cover, Albuquerque, Las Vegas, Tahoe, and Southern California, these prices are historically high for those markets, whether it's 400, 350 to 400,000 in Albuquerque, whether it's, you know, 400,000 as your median price in Vegas and up in Tahoe, well, heck, you can be everywhere. You can be down at three, 350,000, but you can also be up to a million and a half. And certainly Southern California, uh, 750 in some counties, over a million in a couple of counties, uh, L.A. and uh, Orange County specifically, uh, as well as Santa Barbara counties, San Bernardino, Riverside counties, probably around a half a million. But as you can see, these prices are hugely high and still going up. I mean, we talk about how markets themselves have begun to reverse, and we might see within the next six months or so, probably somewhere late second quarter, early third quarter, House prices actually decline, but we haven't seen any of that yet. The only thing we've seen is a deceleration of the increase in price. So 
beginning of the year to June, maybe 20, 22% increase year over year. That's called inflation, everybody. That's why when we talk about inflation that we have been having over the last three to five years, maybe even longer, about housing prices, we really haven't talked about it because everyone's happy when their house goes up. It's like your stock market inflation. You know, if your stock market portfolio goes up 10%, 20% a year, that's inflation. None of those companies are deserving of that. That's all speculatory rise in prices based on the supply and demand of what's available, right? Okay, but those are good things because they make you money and everyone's happy about it. I'm not saying inflation isn't bad, and I'm not saying inflation isn't, you know, the number one thing on most people's minds. It is and should be. But inflation in the housing market has really been at the forefront of where we are and where we sit today, right? We have higher interest rates, partly due to be able to raise those rates because house prices went up so fast in the last three years. That's partly why inflation is what it is. Hey, if your house costs, you know, two, three hundred percent more than it did 10 years ago, well, obviously the prices to uh, be able to build that house, be able to fix that house, to be able to uh, market that house, have to go up as well. That's just part of the inflation scenario. Obviously, we focus more on energy, we focus more on food, but your housing and your housing costs are part of the problem in inflation. And as a result, this market that we have had over the past, you know, since COVID, has really ended. So we see a 22% gain in house prices from uh, a year ago up till June, where we're now seeing closer to 12, 11%. Now, as I said, still going up. So in a normal year, 11% increase year over year is phenomenal. But people are afraid. They're afraid that, you know, as I said, in the end of second quarter, early third quarter next year, we're going to see actual decline in prices. Uh, and there's, you know, anybody's guess, right? But for most economists, uh, let's see, Larry Summers, uh, Mohammed El Aran, uh, let's see, uh, what's her name from ARC Funding? She's not an economist. She runs a fund. But they, they talk about inflation and its effects on their particular markets. The, the country itself and the inflation that it has, you know, produced because of the large amount of money and the very short supply uh, has really caused things and prices to go up. So as a result of all that and as a result of where we are, we sit in a mortgage market that is, you know, difficult. Uh, and all this is, is a fancy way to say, if you're looking for a mortgage right now, yeah, it's hard. But one of the things that we have to talk about is how do you get a mortgage in today's market? You know, I mean, you're looking at a price for uh, getting into a mortgage via the rate. If you're going 30-year fixed, it's over 7%. And that's if you have A credit. And A credit today is above 720 720 to 740, yeah, that's where A credit, A paper credit starts. Not only that, is you have to have the down payment. You know, if, if you're looking for a 30 year fixed rate at seven and a quarter, seven percent, you better darn well have excellent reserves and you better darn well have excellent credit score. If, if you don't, well, you're not going to get that rate. So, one of the good things, and I'll digress quickly here and try to get to the point. People compare this to 2008. It's not 2008. One of the reasons is that since 2008, getting credit has not been easy. The, uh, the difficulty of borrowers to be able to obtain credit has been because tightening via Dodd-Frank has been the rule of thumb ever since 2008. So all of the last 12 years, the restrictions on your mortgage and how to get one has been difficult. You have to have the ability to repay. That's a new type of loan. I mean, you always did, but the, the, the strictness of the way Fannie and Freddie buy those loans is really about making sure that the ability to repay is number one. Credit score has to be a certain thing. You know, credit scores since 2008 have been, on average, on a yearly basis, above 720. That's phenomenal. You know what they were during the, re the Great Recession? Yeah, they were about 620 a full 100 basis points below or 100 points below uh, the current average of credit score. So these abilities of this particular market to weather a storm if we in fact see prices decline 
and I, I'll give you the number, it's 5 to 20% depending on the market. We'll talk a lot, little bit about it in my last segment, just about what's going on in the market and how we're handling it. Anyway, I'm Jeff Martin, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, and uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show. You know, each and every week we come to you via, you know, the radio stations that we talk about, certainly on YouTube. And we do a weekly. We probably are on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook at least once a week talking about the updates in the mortgage market. We call that the Mortgage Minute. If you would like to come to me directly, you can always do that through Twitter at Jeff6493. Uh, is my Twitter handle. And if you want to be able to come and see us via podcasting, uh, we'll give you the addresses of that in next segment. But anyway, I am Jeff Barton. This is the Mortgage Voice. Also, Jeff Barton can be seen and heard on their Mortgage Voice website, mortgagevoice.com, where you'll see and hear not only the show, but you can look at the guests we have on and have them available for you if you want to give them a call, if you want to email them directly from that bit of information on the website so the website go to it sign up say you like it and listen to the shows and contact the guests that are on there that is the mortgagevoice.com thanks very much i am jeff barton and this is the mortgage voice we bring you uh, another great guest and maggie has been on the show several times we not only several times probably over the last seven years probably i don't know 40 30 40 times and she joins us again uh, to talk a little bit about what's going on in the mortgage market and with her own business. Maggie Miller joins us. Hi, Maggie. How are you? Hi, Jeff. I'm good. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Okay, so uh, the big elephant in the room is always the most uh, dreaded topic, which is rates. How's it affecting your business, and what can you help borrowers with with that kind of uh, rate when you're trying to get them a mortgage? Yep. Again, I think I mentioned this in the previous uh, show we had uh, touched on it just lightly, but it, recently I've had several closings come about. It been right. purchases. These are clients that have either been with me for quite some time and finally things have t- taken place, et cetera. But really what I try to tell clients is this. You're, last year you were a 3%, 5% borrower. You're still a 3 to 5% borrower. But this year, where you have the advantage where they're taking a look at you is because, you know, the market has changed. The prices have dropped. You're being looked at a little bit more because the competition is not so much there. So um, I've had clients where they've gotten a home now versus where they would have not last year and they would have overpaid last year. So I tell them, I said, you know, I would rather be in the position that you're in right now with this higher rates, they're still good rates. I mean, if you look at overall over the life of rates, right. they're pretty still decent, but they've been spoiled with, obviously, the high two, low three rates. Um, but if you're going to purchase, they, people still have to buy homes right. uh, for one reason or another, for job transfer or, sure. or whatever, larger home, more children, et cetera. So I tell them, you know, listen, you're getting... A, pr- a home on a price that normally would have been, you know, maybe 25, 50% higher last year where you're getting it cheaper, but you're going to pay for it in the rate. What I feel is, yeah, you're going to pay for it in the high five, low sixes maybe, but at the end of the day, you'll turn around and we'll get rid of that next year or whenever the rates change. Um, and therefore, it's in my opinion, is creating a, uh, a refi boom. To so, okay, so uh, if you're a borrower and you're looking at either, okay, higher rates or higher prices on the home, which we've had actually both this year. Uh, we are, yes. as, as you say, in, in a time where we may see prices fall next year in terms of a lot, 5 to 20% in some markets. Um, right. So being that is what it is, when you're talking to your clients, obviously rates and the way the economy works, if we're in any, any kind of a recession, they're going to lower rates so the refi market comes back. That's what they've done in the last Correct. 25 years in the mortgage business. Is that what you're telling Correct. them? It's better to get a lower price Pretty in your house with a higher rate than a higher rate with a lower price in your house? Absolutely. Right. That's the way I'm able to close the deals that I recently did. You know, they weren't afraid because they knew 
that they have faith in me and they know that come when the time comes when the rates are coming down, they've gotten in now at that lower price they, and they're thrilled because, you know, prior to that they would have paid a lot more. So now, they're, and, and these are clients that I've worked with and they basically last year came to me and they said, you know, we're really not interested right now. You know, even though the rates are great, prices are ridiculous, et cetera. Right. Now, the prices are not ridiculous. They're a little bit more manageable for consumers uh, or at least my consumers. And I tell them, you know, I know the rates are higher than they were last year. However, that'll change. But so the the fact that you can get in on a home that was, you know, 25, 50% higher last year, you can get in on it now, do it. Right. Right. I, I agree. And that's what... Right. I agree with that sentiment completely. I'm sorry to, to cut you off there. I just... Oh, uh, no, that's okay. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so you have a way by which you can build a business, you have built a business, you built trust with your clients. I think in this type of market, clients who rely upon people they know in the business, especially brokers like yourself who have been in the business and have done good things for them in the past, are more apt to get a trust, a, a trust built up so that they'll listen to you now. And I think that's what kind of market it is. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's just really referral. You can right. you can sit there and try to do all the farm packages and do all that you want. The fact of the matter is, it's just you know uh, going through my health scare and then coming back. And some of my realtors got a taste of dealing with other. They had no choice right. of dealing with other learning right. institutions, and they realized going, oh dear, you know, like they were appreciated me then they're like Maggie's back you know she's you know we just get the job done I mean you know we at Malibu we have a team of people within our, our right. little group and we have a great team and we get it done and well getting there's, right there's no BS <laughs> yeah I think getting it done right but also being able to trust that you're not going to get hosed yeah. while you're getting it done I mean the fact is is that Anybody can, hmm, in a refi market, get a loan done. I mean, it's easy, right? It's Absolutely. just you shop around yeah. for the best rate, you shop around for the you know least cost, and that's the way it is. But in a market like this, where you've got difficulty even getting a loan, let alone the yep. cost of the loan, you have to be able to trust the people you're talking to because, you know, it's very difficult to do that when you're not quite sure of what the market's doing, which is what's happening yeah. now. Mm hmm and these, clo these closings I had this past, you know, couple weeks or so, six right. of them or so, were all people that I have uh, dealt with either in the past on the refi on their other home or um, just that were just in the works uh, when the market turned or just by referrals because my agent says she's the best and, and that's that, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I would rather make less but build that reputation or build that trust and have the client realize going, you know, Maggie did this right. And I have clients from years prior right. that come back well, because the, the long, I've always done right by them. Right. The long view of every situation is always the best. And you've always been good at doing that. You've always been fair with people, not only fair, probably more than fair with trying to not yeah. only get them the best product, but also at the, at the best price. And always thinking of the client is exactly what you need in a market like today where Clients are just not sure who to trust, and most of them, mm -hmm. like you said you're, in your initial conversation, hey, we're out. You know, th this is too high, the prices are too high, and the rates are too high. And you said, no, I think you can afford this house. Probably grateful they did that. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, these are clients that actually were so grateful. And right. There was one in particular that we had a, a loan that I didn't even really think was possible and because of the rep at the bank we made it possible where they were able to buy the home and not and treat it as an owner occupied price but they were able to buy the home for the parents because the parents were here a few years you know legally from russia but they were still not in a position to be able to qualify for the price of the home right so the kids bought the home they had intended on doing that anyways and being on the title being on the loan but we got what they call it's like a parent loan where we have to prove the parents can't qualify which is indeed what we did but the kids can buy the home for them and got the own occupied rate which was Great. awesome yeah you no know? that is absolutely awesome listen maggie we got about a minute left i'd like people to know okay where and how to get a hold of you. You do loans in a lot of different places for Malibu funding, and I appreciate you coming on the show. Could you give them a, a way by which they can do that? Yes, 
they can reach me at either uh, phone of 805-527-5877, or they can email me at maggiemortgage at sbcglobal.net. Excellent. Very, very well. Okay. Thanks, Maggie. Thanks for coming on the show. Great information, and I really appreciate the personal touch that you give to all your clients. You're welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much. That's Maggie Miller from Malibu Funding. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, and we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show. Each and every week, we bring to you great guests, great information, and we can be seen and heard on any number of different places. One of the places we can't are our podcasts. I think we're on seven or eight or nine of them. Daryl, you have or a list 10 there? or 15 or 20. <laughs> okay. It's just a growing industry. <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Radio.com, YouTube, PodClips.io, and, of course, the Mortgage Voice, our website. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. We're also on YouTube. If you want to have a variety of different podcasts but not have to shop around and find them for yourself, there is a great place, and we're also there, called podclips.io. We have not only myself in the financial section, but we have a health section, and I say we. I'm not any part of it at all. But these people who have been doing it bring experts to the field of, as I said, health, finance, lifestyle. Um, what else? They got sports. I just a whole lot of them. They've got some legal things, too, about uh, uh, mediation and arbitration. Oh, excellent. Okay, so all of these things are of interest to somebody in, in your life, so let them know, send them that way, and certainly tune me in as well. I'm Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice, and thanks very much for uh, listening to the show. Okay, Thomas Trujillo has been on the show many, many times, expert in many things mortgage. Uh, he's currently looking for the best possible solution for his clients to be able to get loans. And he joins us now to talk a little bit about the mortgage industry. Tomas, how are you? I'm great, Jeff. How are you today, buddy? You know, I'm okay. Thank you very much. I mean, the, the mortgage market, the political scene, the war, inflation, COVID, it seems to stack up sometimes. Uh, I think a lot of times during COVID, the last two years, mortgage market has really escaped a lot of what the rest of the world was experiencing. But now that rates have shot up to sell over 7% for 30-year fixed, it's really brought home a lot of the world problems right to the doorstep of our industry. Uh, how are you reading it? You know what? I don't see it that way. I, I think, well, you and I have been in the business for a long time. When I first yep. got in the business, the best rate on the street was from B of A. It was at uh, 20 20.125 percent <laughs> yep. on a on an adjustable arm, and then when rates started coming down, like let's say in the uh, in 2005, rates were 9.99 with uh, if you want to do 100 percent financing, it was uh, 9.99 with a 12.99 second. Then we saw these amazing rates come in, three percent, one percent, and everybody went crazy. I think it's just back to where it was, where it should have been. I don't think it should have ever been where it was. It's great that it was, but I'm just seeing things are getting back to normal, and we're just starting to chug along again. So so the people, and I agree with you, uh, we're, I'm an old dude, so uh, none of this really phases me all that much. Plus, I have a house that's paid off, so there you go. But what about a young borrower who gets into a market and who's in a you know, 3% loan or suddenly trying to get... Uh, maybe a second home or a rental property, see the rates the way they are. They're not, they're not experienced in it. What they do is they read about it, and they're like, well, you know, that was in ancient times. Uh, how do you convince people that a 7% rate is a great rate, also uh, that the programs available out there are good for them and that they should invest as they were planning to as long as they can make the monthly? Oh, that's the easy part. I mean, we got so many programs nowadays. You have DSCR programs. You have bank statement programs. You have P&L programs. You have stated programs. All these programs you can get into for second property if you're not showing the money, but you're making some money and you know with your bank payments, with your P&L. You do a P&L, you can do it yourself, and no one's looking at anything else other than your P&L. I think it's a great product for, for uh, to get into any kind of property. I think you got to get to properties. We live in California. Right. This is the best place to live. Your property, the property that some I bought my house, what, maybe 20 years ago for 
what three hundred fifty thousand. Right. Today right. is valued at one point one. Yeah. Like one point two million. Yep. And that's that's California. So that's... whatever you buy today, you know you're going to get your money out of it tomorrow. It's the best place in the world to buy. Everybody wants to live here. No, I, I agree with you. I mean, uh, politics aside, that you can't beat the weather. I mean, we have certain seasons, fire season, earthquake season. But for the most part, we escape a lot of the weather issues uh, other than those two specific things. But in big populous areas, we really don't deal with a lot of that stuff unless there's a huge earthquake. And again, that's, you know, 10, 15 seconds worth of shake and it's over. Um, yeah, exactly. I'd rather be here than be in Tornado Alley. Well, I tell you what, I look at what's going on in Florida or in Louisiana every other year or some of the places in Texas. Uh, no thanks. Uh, it, it's just, and getting worse, for whatever reason, I don't get into why. I just, you, you look at it and you go, no, nah, that's not for me. So when people say, hey, I'm leaving California, I go, okay, yeah, it's too taxed. Yeah, there's a lot of bad things. But every day, eight, nine, ten months of the year, I get up, I can do whatever I want outside because the weather's so nice. And that you just can't, you can't beat. And if you can get into a property, which is what we're talking about, it's really heaven here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you got, if you want to get into a property, you got some money down, at least 5%, you can go, you can get to a for almost stated where you don't have to show any income. You don't have to show your income. You don't have to show the income of the property. As long as the ink, as long as the property will cover seventy five percent of your mortgage payment, right. you're gold. It's perfect. You want to borrow some money from your parents to help you get in? Borrow some money from your parents to help you get in. I think it's a great product. We even have stated programs coming back. It's amazing. Actual stated programs. Yeah. Where you right. show no income. You just put it down write it down on paper and that's it. Now, let me ask you a question, because you bring up a good point there. A lot of people are pointing to today being very similar to 2008. I strongly, strongly disagree with that and point out that the credit scores are higher, the ability to repay is different. There are a lot of things different about this market that at that time uh, just did not exist, i.e. regulations, Dodd-Frank, all of that kind of stuff. But if you see the landscape and you're reading you're up on it, you do see that some lenders are in trouble. Some lenders, like Wells and others, are getting out of the wholesale business entirely. Is this cyclical, or is this specific to this particular time? I think it's cyclical. I mean, you see it. It happens every 10 years where somebody, you know, something will blow up, a bunch of people get out. Well, look at Deep Haven. Right. Look at Sprout. They, right. they, they have a history of coming in and out, in and out. Credit Swift, same thing. Credit Swift, right. In and out, right. in and out. They all do it. When, it's, when going gets tough, the tough get going. <laughs> That's very good. Okay, give us some prognostications about uh, what you think rates will do, uh, and more importantly, where you think the house prices are going to head. Well, since it is California, if you want to get something, you got to get it as soon as you can, when you can, because it's only going to keep on going up. Because, like we said before, who doesn't want to live in California? Right. Right. So, and, and I think I think rates. I think rates will probably make. There might be another jump. And if it does, I think it'll, it'll carry us through the end of the year. And I'm thinking next year, 2023, is going to be, we're going to see a lot more improvement. I think we're going to get our feet underneath us. I think we're going to hit the ground running. I think it's going to be a great year for real estate. Well, I, I love real estate. I love the real estate play. But there's been such talk about the upcoming recession in either second quarter or early third quarter of 2023. I don't have a crystal ball, but I do listen to a lot of, uh, you know, national economists that talk about it, well, or whether it's, you know, the head of Chase at Jamie Dimon or it's, you know, some of these other, uh, uh, the guy uh, Yun for the National Association of Realtors or Mohammed El Aran or, you know, there's a bunch of them that are talking doom and gloom in terms of what's happening with the economy. And that usually, you know, is a pretty good reliable source. I do know that if we do get any kind of a recession, they'll probably lower interest rates, which will be good for the mortgage market, too. Absolutely. I think the mortgage market, in Cal especially in California, I think we drive the country. I, we drive the whole country. Well, here it's so, always been with the volatile real estate prices and the way, you know, there's so many borrowers here. There's 40 million people that live here. I mean, it's, it's really, yeah. I mean, probably you have 20% of mortgages in California of the country. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And you got, we have the most diverse borrowers ever. You have right. that's true, and, and diversity. Yeah, people building. I mean, when I was coming up, I had a, I had a, my mentor, 
uh, way back when, he would always tell me, look, you always know where the economy is going by McDonald's. I said, well, what do you mean? Whenever you see McDonald's going out of business, you know we're in trouble. <laughs> and they're building new McDonald's, that's a good sign. You keep your eye open for that. And, you know, he's pretty much been right. I've always followed that. And you see what's going on in Santa Clarita. You're building, uh, uh, what, 400,000 more homes? Right. That's amazing. That's, it is amazing. We need them, too. Tomas, we're up we against need them. it. Exactly. I am sorry, and uh, we're out of time. But can you let people know how to get in touch with you if they want to talk to someone about mortgages and the real estate market in general? They can always give. They can always give you a call. You can always get a hold of me pretty easily, or they sure. can give me a call on my cell phone, which is three two three two two eight five one eight one. And your big bad loan daddy, isn't that uh, your email handle? I am Big Bad Loan Daddy at gmail.com. Excellent. Thomas, thank you very much for coming on. Always appreciate your insight and uh, uh, what you got to say. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's Tomas Trujillo. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show, for listening each and every week. You know, we have many ways that you can hear and listen and see what we're doing. Uh, we're on YouTube, of course, Jeff Barton, the Mortgage Voice. Uh, I've got Jeff Barton, uh, let's see, themortgagevoice.com is our website. Uh, we've got podcasts galore. We've certainly got um, the, the five radio stations that we're on. But for the most part, the best way to really get into what we're doing, go to YouTube. We're on there all the time. I mean, all of these stations that we're on, all of the podcasts, yes, they have archives. And if you do go to any of them, please sign in, say you like it, join up. Uh, we get a pretty good following that we've had, and we keep growing it. YouTube has a picture of me. That's why I want you to go there. It's me in the flesh talking to you. <laughs> in the background is Charles Giscombe from Malibu Funding laughing up a storm. Charles, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, Jeff. Great to be here again, as always. Great. Excellent. Thank you very much, and thanks for coming on. Changing markets, conditions being what they are, really gives opportunity to different kinds of people, different kinds of loans, different kinds of loan scenarios. Give us an example of some of the things that you're seeing now that you maybe not have seen six, eight, ten months ago. Oh, man, it's amazing, this market that we're in. Obviously, right. uh, whenever it comes to us, we always go, hey, what's going on? But it's a cycle. It happens often. Yep. And so at the end of the day, what I've been seeing, Jeff, now is that um, a lot of the different banks that were offering super, super low interest rates that can't offer that anymore, um, they're slowing down a little bit. And I'm seeing a lot of the non-QM and the alternative financing uh, options start coming to the forefront because they have more flexibility. And, and now a lot of their rates are becoming comparable to one another. As where uh, individuals are looking at more non-QM, more bank statement situations, more DSCR loans, right. uh, uh, ATR loans, and uh, and and stated stated uh, documentation loans. I actually been working on some investment loans and fixed loan properties, and the individuals have been very very. They're like they're, they're kind of shocked at the fact that in order to do a traditional loan and get an investment property done, you're probably going to have to pay five to seven points just to see eye-to-eye -eye at the table on one of these non-QM or one of these uh, stated, stated loan programs. So the things, the tables have very much changed in regards to that. But I only say that to say there are still options out there for you to transact, for you to get into this market, because the property values are still there. Yep. Uh, it cools yep. off a little bit in regards to the competition, but there's still value there, and there's still options and opportunities for you to jump in and the different financing financing options that we have here at Malibu Funding. Now, for people that don't know, Charles is the uh, qualified individual out there in Las Vegas, Nevada, and Nevada is one of those markets where we've seen such an increase in prices since 08. Uh, all, you know, it's just, just remarkable. We probably have a median home price now of over $410,000, which I, during the recession, I think it was, you know, $150,000, maybe even less. Correct. What are we correct. looking at in terms of a, a correction, if at all, next year, if, and I believe it's not if, but when recession comes? Well, uh, we have to be honest with ourselves. Right. Uh, there's an, uh, a recession on the horizon. Right. Right. 
And so when we look at it that way, we understand we have to prepare ourselves. Right. I don't believe a correction to occur in regards to us seeing lower interest rates come back before they actually get higher. I would say, Jeff, you know, and I'm not Nostradamus, but I'm just saying maybe 24 months uh, at least um, before it comes back around and we start getting lower interest rates again. Right. Oh, in, I, in, I agree. In the meantime, uh, like places like Las Vegas and, and everywhere that you try and get transactions done, um, the values are still there, which obviously the banks will tighten up even more so than they already are. I always say you can still jump in because if interest rates aren't going to be what they are, you have options and opportunities to get in to pay interest-only loans just to carry you over until the correction does come. It does not mean that you have to shy away from this market. It just means you have to be smarter and understand that your strategy has to deviate and pivot a little bit, but it's still opportunity out there for you. You know, in a market like Las Vegas, in a market like Albuquerque, in a market like Phoenix, and, and a number of other cities where we see real estate prices that have really shot up but are, traditionally aren't as high as they are currently, the options for people to either get into that market, sell out of that market, uh, they've changed. And they've changed, and they're going to change again. Uh, so what do you say to uh, first-time home buyers? or somebody who's probably not familiar with that particular market, when they're looking at, you know, an investment situation. Now, you talked about the non-QM, certainly, but and the DSCR and some of the other programs. But give us an, another example of a program that a borrower like that might be interested in to entice them into getting into a property in cities they might not be so familiar with. I mean, at the end of the day, are we talking about an investment property? If we're talking about yep. an investment property, we have programs that you make. You know, if you have the down payment, if you have the ability to put a hefty down payment down, there's promise programs that will allow you to go get an investment property in your LLC name. Those programs are amazing because they don't have a debt to income ratio uh, uh, threshold. They're not based upon that. It doesn't show up on your personal credit. You don't have liabilities that will, will, will hold you down. So if you have the down payment, you have the ability to go in just off your credit score being 650 or more to go in and look at these purchases. On top of that, you also have the ability to get a renovation loan on an investment property. Right. So let's say, for example, you put 25% down on, uh, on the property uh, to pick it up at 75% LTV, but the bank will also give you 100% of the renovation as long as that after repair value will hold. And that is a great situation, especially for a program that doesn't require you to have W-2s, paycheck stubs, and only bank statements that you need are bank statements to show that you have the ability to put the down payment down. That's a far cry away from a traditional loan that has many, many different requirements in order for you to qualify. But not to fear. You can also go into situations with FHA loans if you do have documentation or government loans that will allow you only to put 3.5% down. And there's also programs that will help you uh, if you don't have the down payment. If you qualify for it, there's different grants and, down, and different down payment assistance programs that can help individuals, too, to help you buy a duplex or a triplex, even. There's many different programs across the board. I am fortunate and blessed enough to be in a company at Malibu Funding that provides all those kind of options and opportunities for individuals, regardless of where you are, to get you into a situation. And we love taking the time. To earn while we learn. We, we don't mind our clients asking questions and trying to find out what things are out there for them if they're just not so sure of, of making one of the biggest steps that you will make in your life in regards to purchasing a property. You know, team playing, being a member of a group, trying to help as a, as a whole rather than just an individual, these are all things that are based on, you know, the concepts in team sports and other things that we often talk about because that's the nature of where you and I both came from uh, back in the day. How do you apply? Absolutely. Yeah. How do you apply those types of techniques uh, of of working together, team building, leadership by example uh, in the mortgage business, especially with a market like we're in now? Let me tell you something. I will be honest with you. Um, I am one of those guys who parallel my uh, scholastic and athletic uh, uh, career, professional career. Uh, based upon teammates, and that is also in my business life. I have always been a team player, and I don't know about other people, but I am super fortunate to be at Malibu Funding, where uh, we have a unique uh, 
blend of individuals who who are all teammates. And as long as you are have individuals that are accountable and knowledgeable, you don't mind passing them the ball. Because at the end of the day, when you pass them the ball, you know they're going to do what they need to do. And, and, and nobody's bigger than the next person at Malibu Funny, I love that. I love the fact that we, we all count on each other. And in this market, sometimes somebody's uh, expertise might be different or better in a certain lane or a certain level. And so at Malibu, we always, you know, stand, you know, stand, stand on one of their shoulders and say, hey, listen, I need some help. Right. If you're better in this situation and you can lead me or guide me into a better loan program where you have a better understanding or knowledge about certain particular loans, it's super important. I have never had a problem leaning on individuals at Malibu Funding. Jeff has always been there. He's a great team leader and captain of this situation. I'm happy to be a part of it. And anything I can do to help my teammates out, whatever it is in regards to products and structure and pricing um, and just a better understanding and knowledge of certain things, I have always been made myself available as my teammates at Malibu have. And it's been super, super helpful for me all my years. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks very much for the compliment and kind words. I do appreciate it. I uh, agree and concur with all of that. Uh, we are up against it. I want to have people let let them know how they can get in touch with you, especially if they're in your area or in many of the other places that you do business. Absolutely, Jeff. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me at 702-328-5191. That's area code 702-328-5191. If you'd like to reach out to me through email, you can reach me at charles at malibufunding.biz. That's charles at malibufunding.boyisaaczenet. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Really good information, and uh, I love the fact that there are many programs for many different types of borrowers. It's not strictly, you know, rate shopping. You're looking for uh, the ability to help people, and I really appreciate that. Not a problem, Jeff. Always a pleasure to be a part of this team and to be on the show. Excellent. Are you there? I am here. Okay, excellent. That's Charles Giscombe from Malibu Funding. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, and we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Welcome back, Barton. everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show. Thanks very much for each and every week coming to us. And uh, we're on a bunch of podcasts, and, but our terrestrial radio stations, five of them in three different states, KCAA and KMET in Southern California, K Tahoe up in the Tahoe area of Mid-California, and certainly uh, AM 1400 K-SHIP out in Las Vegas, Nevada, as well as uh, K-Mine, down in K-Mine country in Albuquerque. Uh, it's an eclectic group of stations, but it is a pretty good cross-section of a lot of uh, borrowers, buyers, people who are looking for housing uh, all across America. And it has been a struggle, uh, especially during the run-up of prices that we've had in all of those markets I just mentioned. Uh, and it's been kind of difficult. But I love the radio stations I'm on. They do a great job getting the message out. We're here each and every week and have been so for, I don't know, almost a decade. So the reliable information you get from me and from the guests that come on the show, as I said, each and every week, come on down, pull up a chair, and listen to what we have to say about mortgages. It'll get you educated and be able to have you make better choices. And that's really what the show is all about, trying to bring you information to make better choices. Okay, let's get right to it. I am Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice. Okay, we talked earlier in a segment of the show about loans and the difficulty it is today to get a loan, let alone with the interest rates at seven and a quarter or whatever they are over 7% for the 30 year fixed. Why is that? Why is it harder to get a loan, especially if you, you know, have good income, good credit score? Well, the lending industry, like a lot of other industries, when times get tough, they have decisions to make. If you've been paying attention at all, you've noticed that some lenders have exited certain aspects of lending, i.e. the mortgage space. We had Wells Fargo earlier uh, in the summer, actually it was mid-summer, probably July to August in that range, almost completely get out of the wholesale or out of the mortgage space. There's volatility in mortgages. Everybody knows that. Nobody wants a repeat of 08, right? 
09. I don't think there will be because I think the loans are good. I think the origination is good. I think the strength of the borrowers are good, and certainly employment is good, and all of those things add up to pretty strong mortgages. But Wells is out. Uh, we've seen uh, Mountain West, which was a DPA, Down Payment Assistance Program type lender. They're out. Uh, First Guarantee is out. Uh, Sprout is out. Sprout was a non-QM lender. So we've seen any number of lenders exit the space, right? Get out. They're not doing it anymore. And we've also seen a good many lenders lay people off. Um, and there's, I don't know, go to Implodometer, and you can look up all the lenders that are out of business and the number that are laying people off, you can read almost daily on any website. But the reason for all that is obvious, right? There's not as many loans, rates went up, so we have to lay people off in order to stay in business. Everybody knows that's a simple formula for it. But why then are loans harder? You would think loans would be easier to get, that the lenders would want you to come in the door and get a loan. You would think that, right? I mean, why else are they in business except to do a loan? Well, the, the main reason is this. If you're doing conforming loans, i.e. government purchased, G, they're, they're not government, they're GSEs, right? Government sponsored entities. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginnie Mae. That's uh, FHA type loans and the government loans. They're VA loans as well as Fannie and Freddie type loans, conforming limits being what they are. Anybody that does that kind of loan who is a lender has to sell those loans or wants to sell those loans to Fannie, Freddie, Ginnie. If you're going to do that, you have to meet Fannie, Freddie, Ginny guidelines. And you don't want to get caught having a coupon or a rate at a certain amount and then have the turndown of that loan being purchased by those entities. So you have to make the loans good. I mean, really good. Not only following guidelines. Let's say the guidelines for an FHA loan is... 500 credit score 500 that's what it is but you're a, a mid-sized lender and you don't want to get caught with more scrutiny on loans because you have obvious credit score issues so you make your own particular lender your own way by which you can lend money on an fha loan credit score has to be 620 which a lot of lenders do even 640 even 660 well also with Conventional loans, that happens. 5-1 arms, too. So one of the reasons that banks do that is so that they can sell their loans. So let's get right to it. I have, I have a list of four things that are more difficult today than they were six months ago in terms of getting you a loan. Number one on the list is uh, DTI ratios. Okay, so the, your basic DTI ratio means your debt to income. Your debt to income based on what you pay for the mortgage, and then your total debt to income. Now, so if you're a lender and you want to make sure that your loans are purchased, you have to make sure that your front end ratio 36, your back end ratio 43. That means percentage of what you pay in terms of the amount that you either pay for your mortgage or your total debt has to be below these numbers. So if you want to be more conservative, you lower those particular DTI numbers. Maybe you lower it to 33 and 40 just to make sure that they're purchased by Fannie and Freddie and making sure that you don't get stuck with the loan and that you also have liquidity available if, in fact, other things happen, i.e., the mortgage rates go higher. Number two, down payment. So if you're in a purchase right now and you're in a certain market that the rates keep going up anyway, but also... You've seen the rise in real estate prices, and you want to basically get in before they maybe rise some more. Well, the lender looks at it completely the opposite. They look at the appraisal and say, what if the market falls 5, 10, 15, 20 percent? We have to cover our butts. Therefore, more of a down payment, more skin in the game. Make sure that the borrower is not going to default. That's another reason why if, in fact, the down payment goes up, that makes it harder for you to borrow. Number three, reserves. That's right. Most loans on purchase require reserves. Three months, six months. So if it's a three-month reserve on a particular product, they could up the reserves to six months, even a year. 
So those things are restrictive on many borrowers who get into loans, especially FHA borrowers. But they're restrictive. So it's going to prevent certain borrowers making loans harder to get. Number four, obviously, the rate. That's right. The rate is one thing, the one you hear quoted oft in generalized websites. But each and every lender gets to set their own rate. There's a margin and there's an index. The index is a certain way that they borrow money and from who and how much. The rate is what they're going to charge you. The spread is in the middle and that's how much they make. In a lot of these cases, lenders aren't making a ton of dough. During the actual uh, COVID, when good times were rolling, making about 3 3 3.5% per loan. That's a pretty good chunk of change right there. But right now, we could be closer to a half a percent in terms of what lenders are making on each individual loan. It's why they're laying people off, especially the public companies. Anyway, those things are, they're real, and it's not just about rate. It's about can you qualify. The CPI came out last Thursday. We'll talk about that next week. Expectations for 2023, lower inflation and lower GDP. People are thinking slow down, but they're also thinking that the interest rate and the inflation rate is going to come down. Wage growth is also slowing. Yes, it is. So those people that waited around because they thought, in fact, oh, no, I can just wait and get a better job later with more money. Well, that gravy train's about ready to end, especially if we go into a recession early to middle of next year. International Mon Monetary Fund cuts growth global growth rate as well. And the bonds costs are down, yields are up. We didn't talk much about the bonds, but yes, we're looking at bonds for the 10-year almost over 4%, and the bonds for the 2-year at 4.4. That's right, the spread is still there, and we still have an inverted yield curve. So recession, unfortunately, is coming. Soft or hard landing, I don't know, but yeah, those things are coming. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show this week, and we'll see you next time. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. For more on today's topic, visit www.malibufunding.net. KCAA, where every day is a great day. KCAA, Loma Linda. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of pricking your fingers all